Okay, who's ready to see some test footage from the Acaso V50X? I did an unboxing video on this little camera recently, and I'll uh, put a link down in the description in case you didn't see it yet. And what we've got today is test footage uh, being shot in 4K mode, which is the mode that I'll be using in the future, so that's the one I'm interested in seeing and testing. And I should explain the uh, first two clips. Uh, I wanted to test the audio on the camera because I've read in a number of reviews that it has bad audio. Uh, and what I did was I shot some video with uh, my phone, my Pixel 2 phone, as a control clip. And uh, I did it outside in a noisy environment with some wind, thinking that that would challenge both devices. Uh, what I found out, though, is that the audio is so horrible on the Sakaso that uh, it was kind of a waste of time. So, so there are two clips. You're going you're gonna to see the one with the Pixel 2 phone first and hear audio that sounds basically like what you're hearing now, but with some wind noise. And then we switch to the Akaso and... Uh, it just sounds broken. There's there's no discernible audio at all. If you turn the volume all the way up, you can barely hear it. Uh, but basically, if you need good audio, you shouldn't be using this camera to begin with. Uh, which I kind of knew going in. I just need it for the video. But after those two clips, then uh, we're going to have a lot of nice 4K samples. And I'll put some supers on them to describe the camera settings that I used. Uh, I may also... Uh, add a little voiceover to describe what's going on. So let's go, let's look at some video. Hi, this is Steve again. Uh, today we're gonna show you some test footage from the Acaso V50X. And uh, I'm shooting this on my cell phone uh, in 4K, just as a bit of a control test. So the audio you're hearing is being recorded on my uh, Pixel 2 cell phone. And in just a moment, we'll switch to the Acaso so we can check out the audio on it. Hey, it's Steve again. This time we're recording on the Acaso V50X. And the audio you're hearing is being recorded by that camera now. Uh, my guess is that it's a little quieter than the cell phone audio was. Just hear some bells up there, too, maybe. This is sweet to catch. Now that the horrible audio test is over, uh, let's get on with some tests that uh, show what this camera is really good at. Uh, for each of these, I've got the camera on a tripod so we can see in its best possible uh, results. The, this shot is uh, 4K, 30 frames per second, H.264 encoding, auto white balance, auto ISO, with the WDR setting on. Now for the second clip here, it's still 4K on the tripod, 30 frames per second. Only difference is we're using H.265 encoding. Uh, now in theory this should give us uh, higher quality for the same disk storage space, but we may lose quality because uploading to YouTube will convert to 264. So just kind of wanted to compare the two, uh, see which one looked better. Now for this third test, same settings with one exception. I've turned on distortion calibration. Uh, as you can see, it does nothing at all. What it's supposed to do is compensate for the very wide angle lens. It's supposed to correct the image distortion from the lens. I think it just doesn't work in 4K. Okay, now we're on to the image stabilization test. And what I'm going to do is repeat this uh, procedure several times. In this first one, we've got everything turned off, so it's very shaky. Uh, we're going to complete, a, it's about a 40 second walk from a light area through a dark tunnel out the other end to light. So you're kind of getting an exposure test at the same time. Uh, but the, the real goal, though, is just to see how well image stabilization works and what exactly gyro uh, adds to the image stabilization. 
So now we're starting pass number two, and the only difference is I've turned the gyro on, but electronic image stabilization is still off. So if it works like I would expect, this should have no effect, and that's what it looks like to me. Uh, and the reason for that is that the gyroscope feeds data into the electronic image stabilization system. So if that's off, turning the gyro on has no real effect, as we can see here. Now we're starting pass number three, and in this one I've turned the gyro off again, but electronic image stabilization is on. So this is the minimum level of image stabilization. Uh, and without the gyro, electronic image stabilization is just looking for cues in the image itself and trying to stabilize it based on that. It doesn't actually know what movements the camera is going through. But it does uh, uh, clearly provide uh, an improvement. And now we're starting pass four. We have image stabilization on and the gyroscope is turned on. So this should be the maximum possible level of image stabilization. It's taking into account not just cues in the photograph, such as the horizon. Uh, it's also using image from the gyroscope to understand what camera movements are happening and trying to compensate for those. Uh, and it really does appear to work uh, very well. Uh, surprisingly well for a camera that's inexpensive. Uh, this is uh, another test of image stabilization in which I've got it off. This is handheld. Uh, if you look at some of the fixed structures, the buildings or the bridges, you can clearly see camera motion. Uh, also of interest in this one, the sun is over on the left side, so you can see just a little bit of uh, sun star and lens flare uh, stuff going on. Now in the second shot, I have image stabilization on. If you look at the buildings uh, or the edges, uh, it looks very stable, almost like it's on a tripod. And this was... Uh, a longer sort of real-world test of image stabilization uh, in which I just hold the camera in my hand and I'm running down the sidewalk up some stairs across the street just trying to see what kinds of stuff might affect it. I noticed during the street crossing there are some jerky movements being produced by the image stabilization. I believe that may be because it's not finding the cues that it needs. It seems to require the horizon to be in view uh, in order to be smooth. If it can't see the horizon, it gets a little confused, it seems. But overall, uh, it's, it's very smooth considering I'm running with this thing. And now we're going to turn the corner and run down the stairs. And I couldn't resist chasing a couple of ducks while I was out there. And I got one final shot uh, of interest because you can see some chromatic aberration in the lens, which is typical on inexpensive uh, camera lenses like this. If you look at the arch on the underside of the bridge, you can see a purple line between the dark and the light and that's uh, just caused by uh, a lack of quality in the lens. Uh, if you had, for example, a DSLR, it would have very expensive lens coatings and materials to suppress those. But overall, the quality is very nice here. Okay, so now you've seen the test footage for the Acaso V50X, and uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see uh, anything else. I'll probably do a video with some 
time-lapse uh, footage from this camera. Uh, not something I was planning to do originally, but it just looks like a lot of fun after playing with the settings. So uh, I'll do that soon, and uh, let me know in the comments if there's something else you'd like to see, the uh, 1080p or 2K, whatever. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, click that little subscribe button down there. Uh, that would help me out a lot, and uh, you'll get to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks a lot.